Hi, this is Cindy from Part-Time Permies, and today I wanted to give you a little flock update since it's been a little while. First of all, we did start shifting both the main flock and the silky flock on pasture. So they both have their mobile coops. The coop over there is the one that um, we built just before leaving for Montreal. So I'll give you a little tour. Hi Gus. Where's your flock? Where's your flock, huh? Mr. Gus is getting a little more friendly. Really? He's not quite so skittish of me and he will take food from my hand, which I don't have for you right now, Mr. Gus. We are in desperate need to clean out his pool, which he's put a lot of grass in, it looks like, and water. There's Zebra, the silky rooster. And we have started fermenting feed, so these guys really don't eat it very fast. In fact, this is... Yeah, hi, Zebra. In fact, this is probably way more than what we need for them today. Here is our finished coop. Now, the silkies have not been using the roofs. And one viewer did say that they don't, if you can't train them to this roost, to try lowering it down. I might lower it down a bit because they do like to roost on the sideboard holding the um, bedding in place. But, and I do need to clean this out a little bit, but in the meantime, these two girls have both decided to go broody at the same time. So I'm not going to change anything until they've hatched their chicks. I've given them, I believe it's eight silky eggs. And I didn't give them any more when the second one went broody like a few days after the first one. They, one did steal some eggs from the other, so they both have a few eggs under them. And I hope they could just co-raise the chicks together. So I'm going to leave them in this flock, in this coop, as we move them around, and hopefully we'll have some silky chicks. And of course that means this rooster has no hen to hang out with, because our third hen is raising chicks right now. Okay, so this coop was actually quite easy to move. It's hard to turn because none of the wheels are swivel wheels. I have to actually lift one end and turn it around a little bit but it could roll both directions in a fairly straight line, which is quite easy. Okay, so that's possible to do with one hand. Um, that's looking a little better, isn't it, Gus? You got some fresh water now. Time to get Lucky some fresh water. One thing Mr. Gus here has been upset about, other than not having very many silkies to take care of because they're all sitting on eggs, is that his third silky hen is now way over there with a bunch of chicks. And he really wants to be with those chicks and that hen. I had the chicks and hen right next to the fence for a while and he would just stand there and watch over them. But now they're a little bit far away. So he pretty much spends almost his whole, whole day pacing along this fence line watching that hen and her chicks. So that being said, I think our next move will be putting the silky flock with Gus with the fence around that nursery coop with the other silky hen and her six chicks. So, 
so he could spend his time right next to them if he wants to and watch over them and stuff because he does not seem very happy over here um, he just hangs out in this one area he will go get in his pool and take a little break and swim around and stuff he won't go into that coop he was for a few days but then he, he seems to get a little claustrophobic in there and not want to stay in there so um, I've just let him stay out all night. Uh, he hasn't had any problems with that. He sleeps in the yard. He doesn't mind rain, so if it's raining, the geese, neither goose wants to go in when it's raining. They really do like the water. So, so he's been hanging out just in the fenced-in area, and he does have a little shelter if he wants to. Um, it is a slightly short for him, but he does fit in there if he wanted to sit down in there. But I've never seen either of the geese try to use that little shelter. I've pretty much just been using it to cover up the um, the uh, calcium, the oyster shells, so to keep them from dissolving too much when it's raining out. But yeah, so they will. The next move will be from there to this area, so that he could be right around these chicks. Now, of course, these chicks move around too. So I do also have the babies on fermented feed. Uh, or soaked feed depending on how you call it and they eat a little bit of it but you know I have them on fresh grass every day I shift this coop around every day uh, they like the clover that we have in the yard and pretty much eat that up and of course they love the bugs when we get them shifted um, especially when I shift them in the evening they go nuts so basically uh, I probably don't need to make as much fermented feed and only need to give them a little bit, but if I don't get a chance to shift them every day, then I need to give them more. So it's one thing I noticed with the feed. Every time I shift anybody, uh, they eat less of the feed, probably find more bugs and eat more grass. It's a little breezy out here, sorry for the wind. But uh, I found that with the main flock too. The day after I moved them, they, hardly, they ate maybe half their food and then the days just before I moved them, they pretty much wanted to eat almost all of what I was giving them. So I might have to adjust the amounts I soak based on when I plan on moving the flock. There's hardly any clover left in here. Pretty much snacked on almost all of it. Whereas over right outside, if you see that, there's a lot of clover. And now... What'd you do to this bowl? There was water in there, like two minutes ago. What'd you do to that bowl? The chickens all think I have food. I think you tipped your bowl over, Lucky. 
No wonder it never has water in it. That's not your swimming bowl. Okay, of all these white hens out here, I've been trying to figure out if any of them are actually Houdini. Maybe this one. Not 100% sure. I'll tell you why I'm trying to figure that out. Okay. We have silky raising chicks over there. Two silkies sitting on eggs in there. And over where the silkies used to be, we have two hens sitting on eggs in there. And one more. We have three full hens, like full-sized hens, sitting on eggs, about 30 eggs. One we got in this nursery coop here. This was one of two that went broody. Was it two weeks ago now? Same weekend. In fact, we thought three had gone broody within like two days of each other. The third one was, I think, a first time broody girl wasn't really that into it, so. But this one is sitting on a bunch of eggs. I don't even remember how many she has anymore because I've rearranged them a couple times. Unfortunately, when I thought that one girl was broody and then she wasn't. So I think this one may have about eight eggs, nine eggs, somewhere in there anyway. She's doing a good job. She's, she's sitting tight. I have not caught her off this nest. Um, although they do get up, eat, drink, and poop usually once a day or every other day or so but she is definitely dedicated to this job so she should be good at raising some chicks oh by the way out here you see all this polyculture out here uh mike seeded some um basically it was a chicken forage just outside these coops so that in the fall when we move them back in and we have extend their fencing outside of their run areas that they have some good food out here combination of a variety of things some barleys some brassicas i see some wild things like wild spinach um some bean plants and some peas. So, and I see some self, probably chicken planted tomato right here. <laughs> so we have a whole variety of plants. And this, I believe, is a chicken planted squash. We'll see what grows from that. So hopefully that'll help cut some of the feed costs uh, when we move them back to this area. But I'll show you something else we have. This girl went broody about the same time as that other girl. And she is covering more eggs. Although, again, I shoveled them around, so I'm not sure how many she's left with because this weekend, this girl decided to go broody. And I was trying to figure out if that's Houdini or not. Um, I have a feeling it's not, but she's about as mean as Houdini is. So I took some of the eggs from the other girls and gave some to her. So we're averaging, we're at about 30 eggs total, maybe 28 um, between three girls. I forget how many each one has. They should all be hatching on the same day. <laughs> so these two I'm hoping will co-raise them, but we'll see how they do. Hopefully they won't try to steal each other's chicks. Hopefully they'll work together on it. But once those chicks hatch, I might put some fencing out in the pasture around here just so I can open the door and let them uh, free range a little bit, not free range completely, but pasture um, out there a little bit while we're home. It won't be an electric net, so it's not gonna keep things like coyotes and foxes out. But hopefully it'll keep these guys from straying too far. Yeah, I know. Okay, so that basically means we have five hens sitting on eggs. T 
total of, well, 28 or 30 for, from the main flock, eggs from the main flock, um, and about eight silky eggs. So my goal here is the eggs from the main flock, um, been averaging a pretty good hatch rate, but the goal for these will not be to join the main flock unless there's some hens that look like they're bigger than the others. In that case, I'll keep them for breeding stock for next year. But we'll basically plan on having a big butcher day and have some meat, uh, meat chickens out of these. Uh, so that won't be probably until September-ish. So we want to make sure, the thing is, we don't have meat breeds. We have dual purpose breeds, so it does take them longer to grow to full sized. Um, and but if you want the more tender meat, you want to uh, grow them a little less, which means they'll be a little smaller. More flavorful meat, you want to let them go 16 to 20 weeks, so that might be pushing into October. But we'll be somewhere around there where we'll just butcher a bunch of these and we'll probably take out some from the main flock as well to thin it down before the winter um <laughs> because we have way too many chickens at the moment but we need some more in our freezer so that's the goal for those uh main flock chicks that's true for the one that the silky the six chicks that the silkies have as well we'll keep an eye on them if there's a girl that's looking like a bigger size we might keep her but um to help increase the size in our flock for next year. For the silkies, I'm hoping to get a few more hens because they make a lot nicer mamas. Although it seems like my main flock girls like to go broody too. I kind of like to take advantage when they go broody, but that basically means the girls from the main flock, they tend to be meaner. Um, so when they're raising chicks, more likely to use those for meat chicks instead of for flock chicks. And then the chicks that the silkies raise are a little more likely to be ones I keep, more friendly, work towards it anyway. I can handle their chicks more, so they're usually a little more used to people. But we'll just see how it goes because really when it comes down to it, I'm looking for confirmation right now. So um, building up the size of the flock so we can have a better dual purpose breed. These hens lay plenty of eggs we're getting uh, even with all these broody girls, we're getting over a dozen eggs a day, most days. So, although I will say yesterday you got about six because I think some goose decided to take a little walk across the nest boxes and crushed about three eggs or so in three different nest boxes anyway, which made for some dirty other eggs, which meant I gave those back to the chickens. Um, so I only ended up with a half dozen, but I probably had around a dozen laid yesterday I just didn't keep them all so anyway that's what's going on with our flock we're going to be slowly moving them pasture by pasture so they're here right now we'll move them around the play set and that direction and then we'll start moving them in back where we have some more pasture grasses um, that Mike planted as well as a bunch of wild plants wildflowers a lot of polyculture back there so we're letting that grow up now. Okay, one more little fact. Chickens don't really like to eat full grown grasses, but the geese will. So the geese are our lawn mowers basically. They'll take it down a little bit. There may be a few things they avoid, but I don't mind that because that means we'll have some more flowers um, unless they decide to eat the edible ones but there'll be a lot more bugs back there in the taller grasses so the chickens will still get a good amount of forage whether it's bugs or uh, produce I guess um, so hopefully our goal is to cut our feed back as we move them back there even more I'm still working out the amount that they need of fermented feed because it seems to be varying a little bit depending on how recently I've moved them but I've only moved them once since starting that feed. So it's a little tough on one hand to try to make sure I'm getting them enough feed fermented for each day. Um, I seem to be overdoing it a little bit right now because they're not quite eating all of it in one day. But it depends on the day a little bit too. So I'm going to be slowly cutting back a little bit until 
I kind of hit that point where they seem to be, you know, not, seem to be eating almost all of it or all of it. That's the goal anyway, maybe overfeeding them so I could probably even cut it back a little further from there as long as the egg production doesn't fall off. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the flock update. I will see you with the next video.